Hey guys, it's been a while. David from DoD Media. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of the new subscribers and welcome. I hope that you've enjoyed what made you subscribe to me in the first place and I hope that this tutorial will be useful to you. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is how to use the streamlined feature of Dynamic Link because still it's been around for years now but a lot of people just don't quite understand what Dynamic Link can do for them and it can do a lot. So what we're going to be doing is starting with an Illustrator file and then we're going to bring that into After Effects, mess around with it, animate it a bit and then we're going to bring that After Effects composition into Premiere, add some sound effects to it so that we can cue it all nicely in Premiere and you're going to see that any single change that we make to the Illustrator file or within After Effects, it's all instant. You don't need to export anything. You don't need to render anything. It's, they've streamlined it so that you can, you can do all of this instantly and not waste time, which is fantastic. So we're going to start with Illustrator and let's jump right in. We're going to be using my logo, but you use whatever you want on Illustrator and just follow along. All right, so I've got my logo loaded up here in Illustrator, DoD Media. You can see I've separated each asset into individual layers. So here we've got the main uh, graphic bit. Here we've got the dot, which I animate, and then we have the DoD Media, the name of the, of the company. So the importance of separating it into layers is that After Effects can then use each layer individually so that you can animate the words to go off in one direction and the graphic to go off in a different direction and all that. If they're all grouped into one layer, you'll see that it, After Effects can only see that as one item and you won't be able to animate them individually unless you make duplicates of it and mask it out and all that shit and that's, that's a pain in the ass. So do it like this in individual layers and you'll save a lot of time. All right, so what we're gonna do is drag this straight into After Effects, save it first obviously, um, and dump it in After Effects and you'll see here this is what I've done already um, but we'll start from scratch. So what I've done is made a composition where each asset comes in, animates and then animates out again. Okay and then what I've done is drag that into Premiere and synced it up with the jingle that you would have heard moments ago, uh, the music from the jingle and this is what you get. So simple. Right, so let's head back over to After Effects and delete everything and start from scratch, okay? So we've got uh, those things there, bang, all gone. Okay, and then just so Premiere doesn't freak out, we're just gonna delete this and this. Okay, and let's just delete the sequence as well. I'll keep the jingle there because I'm gonna use the music. You can use whatever sound you want if you wanna use sound or music or what evs. Uh, so After Effects, project. Let's double click on this. Let's bring in the logo that you want. Now, if you're using more than one layer, you need to have this as composition. If it is one single item and you don't need to separate any of them, you can just import it as footage. It doesn't really make a difference if it's one item. Uh, but composition, it's gonna import each layer as a separate item. And that's what we're gonna do, that's what I want. So hit okay. Now you'll see it creates a composition there. And I could work from that if I wanted. It's a 23.976 frames per second composition. And I believe it's uh, I believe it's a 1080. Yeah, 1920 by 1080. Because that's basically the dimensions of the Illustrator file that I made. Um, if you imported it and your Illustrator um, artboard was a square or something, then just delete that composition, create a new composition, and drag your objects into it and replace them how they're meant to be. The only issue of doing that is that it's gonna center everything, whereas here it's retaining where they are in the document. So if you're able to make your Illustrator file a HD or whatever format you're working with, make it that resolution, and that way it will import it and keep everything where it's meant to be. All right, so we can't see them obviously because they're black on a black background. We could do two things. We could change the color of the background, but actually I wanna create a, a ramped color background anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a solid. I'm gonna call it ramp. 
make it sure it's the comp size, go to effects, go ramp and pick gradient ramp. Now in linear, press radial there. We want it to start smack in the center. So the half of 1080 is 540. So 540, that'll put it right in the middle. Okay, and then end of the ramp, we're just gonna drag this out until it looks like it's basically a slight vignette. I'm gonna swap the colors and let's just make this blue. That's a nice blue, that'll do. Okay, and then this one, I'm gonna make it the same blue and then just make it a touch darker. And maybe actually bring this in so there's a bit more of a, bit more of a ramp. There we go, that'll do. Now just drag this down so that it's in the background. You could even lock it and um, just toggle switch there. You could even make it shy, lock it and then shy it. And now if I click, it's just not gonna do anything. Okay, that's what we want. Now, layer three, layer two, layer one, it's not the best naming. So let's call this um, brand. Let's call this dot and let's call this graphic. 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 Okay, now, one of the most important things when you're working with vectors is to rasterize the vectors. And by doing that, you will ensure that whatever scale, however you manipulate it, it will maintain its vectorial qualities. So it will maintain smooth edges, smooth corners, it won't pixelate. And that's really what we want because we're gonna be playing with it. We want it to maintain smooth. Tick this little star here, which is uh, continuously rasterized vector images. By doing that, if I, let me just show you actually, if I scale this up like crazy, okay, and I remove this, you see it goes completely gross. Um, and that's because if you've ever scaled something up in Photoshop, for example, it, if it's a teeny tiny thumbnail that you've got offline and you're trying to make it huge to print on A4, it's gonna look pretty shit. Uh, whereas with a vector, the magic is that it doesn't matter what scale it's at. All right, so let's just reset the scale and there we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. Happy now, it's in there, cool. So next thing, we want this to be in Premiere, right? So let's grab this composition. First of all, let's rename it to uh, Master Dine Link. You don't have to call it this if you don't want to. Everyone has their own naming convention. I like to use this because when you've got this project window full of compositions, and I'm talking, it can be 50, 100, 500 compositions. You don't wanna to have to faff around trying to find it, and you wanna be able to find it easily by searching here with a name that you'll know you have. So either master or dyne link for dynamic link, because that's the one that you're gonna be wanting to send to Premiere. Um, if you're gonna be sending multiple compositions to Premiere, then dyne link is a good one because you can give them a special name like scene three, Dime Link, and you just type in Dime Link and all of the ones that are going to Premiere will show up listed there. So it's a good naming convention to follow because it makes sense, but if you have one uh, that makes more sense, please leave it in the comments, I'd love to hear. Um, so anyway, I'm using Dime Link. What we're gonna do is take Dime Link and we're just gonna drag it over to Premiere into the project folder and dump it there. Now, a lot of people hit Google and I was one of them hit Google saying, why the hell can't I import my uh, composition straight into Premiere as a dynamic link? It won't let me each time I do it. It just, it, it has like the crossed out thing and all that. The reason for that in like 90% of the cases that I've seen is that people have not saved their After Effects project. And because they've not saved it, you can't dynamically link something that still doesn't exist because it hasn't been saved anywhere. It doesn't technically exist. So to make sure that it exists, you save it and you can save it wherever you want. However, I'm not gonna tell you how to save your files. Now, because I did save it, I can import this composition into Premiere. And what I want is a timeline or sequence to be created from that comp because remember, even though it's essentially like a sequence or a timeline in After Effects, it's only an asset in Premiere. 
it's like a video or audio file or anything like that, or a picture. It's not actually a sequence, so you need to create a sequence to house it in. So let's drag it down there to that little guy there, and it's going to create a sequence based on the settings of that comp. Okay, hunky-dory, we've got a sequence. We have our dynamically linked ramped blue awesome logo, and now what we can do is start messing around with it. And let me just show you, if I drop this down a few notches and head over to Premiere, it's updated immediately. It's, uh, it's not even taking any time to cross it over like that. You see, I have it on half uh, quality, one half resolution, because I just find that it, I mean, the same reason that people edit with proxies, you don't need the full resolution all the time while you're still editing and while you're still creating stuff. It's only for the export, really. And sure, it helps to see the full resolution if you're not sure exactly what you're going for, but if you have a pretty clear picture in your mind, just you don't need to put your computer under the burden of going full resolution for everything because it'll get hot, it'll get noisy, it'll slow down. So make it half resolution or even quarter resolution I've used before um, for more uh, intricate animations. Uh, this one's pretty simple. I could even go full resolution, but I don't want the screen recording to start lagging this as well. So let's stick to half resolution. Now, if I go back to After Effects, Let's animate this, okay? Let's select all three here. Let's hit position and hit a stopwatch. And then let's do shift command or shift control and the right arrow. And it's gonna skip ahead 10 frames, okay? And let's add another keyframe there. Okay, now J to go back to the first keyframe or the previous keyframe. Now the brand, I want it coming from underneath. So that's gonna go down there. The graphic, I want it coming from on top. So that's gonna go up there. And the dot, I want it coming from the right. So that's gonna come over here. All right. Now, as you can see, because I set that other keyframe there, they're all just gonna come down, collapse in there. Cool. Now I'm just gonna check one thing because I think I noticed that the dots, ah yes, so the dot's anchor point isn't in the middle of the dot, which is going to be a pain when it comes to animating the dot because it's going to swivel around that anchor point instead of on, its, on itself. So let's just change that by hitting Y uh, or up here. You've got your pan behind anchor point tool. Okay, and I'm just going to bring that down there like so. Okay, yeah, it looks pretty central. That'll do. Okay. Now, I'm obviously gonna have to redo my keyframes. So let me, oh, that's not what I wanted. Let me remove the stopwatch. That'll delete all keyframes and keep the item where it is, where the timeline is, where the, the playhead is. And then put the stopwatch back on, shove another keyframe there, scroll up there so it fits to view. Okay, and we're just going to shove this all the way over here out of the window. There we go. Now they all come in like that. Cool. So these ones, I want them to easy ease because I want it to be like they're just fitting into shape, into position where they're meant to be. I don't want them to go like that. I want them to go, yeah, nice and smooth. Okay. This one, however, the dot, I want it to bounce because I want it to feel like it's coming in and then bouncing and then resting where it is. And for that, we're gonna use an expression. Now, I have a list of expressions here and I don't know where I got all of them to be quite honest, but thank you very much to the person who did create this. It's fantastic, I've used it a lot. And um, it's just, it's a whole world that I don't really know about yet. I understand how to use expressions, but making my own, that's, it's beyond me to be quite honest. Uh, so thank you for your time and effort in making this. So let's copy this expression and you'll notice I've called it inertia bounce. So to set the expression, you hit alt on the uh, stopwatch there and you'll see this becomes red and this text comes up here. Let's just paste it in and now you'll see, boing, it bounces. And that's bouncing a little bit too much for me. Um, I would like the, essentially the gravity force to be slightly bigger there. Uh, I'd rather it was like a bounce on Mars than a bounce on Earth. 
So I'm going to put that to 8,000 um, so that there's a bigger force drawing it down. So it's not going to be able to bounce away as much. It's going to go uh, uh, and get stuck there. I hope you're appreciating all my hand gestures right now because I surely am. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a little dog snoring just behind the door there. I had to kick her out because she was making too much noise and it was picking up in the recording. So now what she's done is this tiny little crack in the door. She shoved her nose right up against it and she's snoring her head off. Spiteful little bitch. So, okay, yeah, that's much better. So let's have a look now. If we head over to Premiere, what's happened? Well, it's updated it. You can see now it's animating. I haven't had to export it. I haven't had to do any rendering. I haven't had to, to refresh it even in Premiere. It's just done it by itself. It's, it's constantly looking at that composition that it's linking from and it's saying, cool, I see changes have happened there. Let's, let's just reflect those changes quickly in, in our thing while he's busy doing his changes elsewhere. Awesome. And now if I do this in Illustrator, for example, let's say I want to make all of these white. Okay, well, I just uh, come in here and I make them whoop, blah, and I make them white. Now, if I save, go over to After Effects, you see it becomes white, which means then if I go over to Premiere, it becomes white. Cool. So you can imagine the kind of stuff that you can do with this is pretty huge, especially if you're working with lots of different vectors at the same time. Uh, if you've ever done any infographic work, you'll know that that requires a lot of vectors. You, you're going to be using, you know, 50, 100 different vector files all at the same time from different sources and you're going to need them all to be kept up to date and not not be screwed up. You don't want to have to export all of those files each time into Premiere to be able to, to see what you've done or to edit it to some music um, or sound effects. You, you want it to all be streamlined and that's what Premiere and After Effects and Illustrator can do with Dynamic Link is it can streamline your workflow. So there you go. I hope that you enjoyed watching this. I hope you learned something and I hope that this makes your uh, workflow just that bit quicker and that bit more efficient. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's see this dog. Are you snoring? You want to come in, is that what? Yes. Okay, go on then.